Are you on the journey to getting a purple weapon at the start of every Cold War Zombies match? Then today's video is right for you. Hello there, my name is Justin from Day Night, and today we continue our trek through the Cold War Easter eggs, and we'll be tackling the Mauer Deer Toten Easter egg. I did edit it very similarly to the past two videos, but I am trying out a new spin. So the very beginning of this video is going to have the sped up footage. So for those of you who don't know how to get to the power switch and pack a punch, you'll know the path thing. But after that, it's going to be mostly jump cuts to the various different uh, steps of the Easter egg. And at the very beginning of this video, I'm also going to detail all the steps of the Easter egg, and then we'll jump into the very first step. So I'm going to fast forward the footage until we get to the power switch, where we will find all the steps of the Easter egg and the start of the Easter egg. So I'll see you guys here in a moment. And now that we've made it through the time segment, we'll get into the steps. Uh, you'll see them on screen right now. They're going to be in segments of five, and you can read them on screen and pause as needed. After all these segments are done playing on screen, we're going to jump into the very first step of that, which is going to be turning on the power. So you're just going to be killing the Tempest that just spawned in the room with us. Um, so we'll see you here in just a moment. As I said earlier, to get the first fuse for the power, you're going to kill this Tempest and then grab the fuse on the floor. Next, you're going to kill a second Tempest in the underground area, and then you're going to hook them up to the power switch. I'm going to speed it up until you get there. Here is the second Tempest, you're going to grab the fuse, plug him into the machine, and turn on the power. Like I said earlier, I am going to be doing the speeding up segments and more explaining at the beginning of this video for new players, but then after this point and the pack punch point, it's going to be a lot of jump cuts with shorter explanations, so you guys let me know in the comment section below if you like this style more of tutorials, or if you like the style better of my uh, D Machina and Firebase Z tutorials. But after we turn on the power, we're going to head up this rope. There's going to be sort of a ritual system. So once you interact with the Pack-a-Punch machine, it's going to start a ritual where a bunch of zombies are going to spawn in with a... I um, can't remember exactly what his name is. He's like a little Dementor guy up the top. Once you kill him, the main guy, it will cause a Riptide explosion and despawn the zombies. It's not going to end the round, but it's going to despawn them and they'll come back in over time. 
So as you see, I kill him, and that's going to end the ritual. Pack Punch is now going to be unlocked with a little explosion that you see there. That's just going to despawn the zombies, and from here you can take this opportunity to either dig up the holes here uh, for the satellite dish with later on the Easter egg, you can pack a punch, you can get some armor, or you can just train around the zombies waiting for you the next steps of the Easter egg. As suggested earlier, that's going to lead us to our next step, it's digging for the satellite dish. You're going to be digging up these potholes here until you're able to collect the gold satellite dish, which you see on screen right there. We need that for the Klaus upgrade later on the Easter egg. And while we're here, we can also train around the zombies, get some extra points so we can, up, we can uh, blow up the debris leading to the second half of the map. We can upgrade our armor, or we can get brain rot for the next steps of the Easter egg. Next up, we're going to be buying the Brain Ross alternative ammo type, as we do need to turn a zombie to have him open this debris in the hotel section later on. You can see me zip lining up to that area. You're going to follow this pathing past the speed cola machine and then down the hallway. There's going to be a room at the end of the hallway that you can see into. There's a bunch of plywood blocking up the entrance. If you turn a zombie in this room, this is actually going to lead the zombie to break down the debris and he's gonna open up that room for you. So that takes us into step five, brain rotting a zombie. So in comes a couple of zombies, and then next one, bang. He is going to open up the door, allowing us to grab an item inside and to open up the room with the vault later on to get a free wonder weapon. So here you see us go in there. We're gonna take the hands from the bed zombie here, and that's gonna be one of our parts for the, uh, the Klaus build later on. Next, we're gonna head over here to the right and place the satellite dish in the upgrade chamber. So we're gonna use the upgrade Klaus later on in the Easter egg. Now, essentially all we're doing now is running rounds until round 10. That is the first time the Panzer or the Krasny Soldat is gonna spawn in. He has a piece for our Klaus upgrade. So once we defeat him, we will be able to grab that piece and build Klaus for the first time. The first time is going to be free once you build him, but every time after that is going to be 10,000, uh, not 10,000, 2,000 points, goodness sakes, 2,000 points to uh, spawn in Klaus every time after the first time. So once we grab the battery, we're going to take the zip down here. He is going to be in the corner right there, and since you grabbed the hands earlier, you're good to go. Then you can use Klaus to uh, open up a cabinet over here to the left. Just by using the L1 button, you can summon Klaus to a particular location, or if you have the, uh, the marker right in front of the location, he might interact with it. Uh, that's what we're going to do with this locker. That's what we're going to have to do with a wall later on in the Easter egg there. So after we pick up the flashlight and have Klaus get zombie kills, he needs quite a few zombie kills um, to make sure he's able to go into the chamber earlier with the satellite dish. Uh, while we're having him kill zombies, we can have him punch this wall. This is going to expose a secret room that you'll have to shoot the wonder weapon at later on. But after that, again, you can continue to train zombies and have Klaus get as many kills as humanly possible. I think it's about 50 that he needs to be able to be upgraded in the chair with the satellite dish. Next, we're going to look for the codes for the free Cerberus weapon upgrade. On the wall, you can see the number, I think it was two or three. Uh, there are three different codes for the vaults, and that number is going to tell you which number is going to fall in the code order. And right there, you can find the code. By using the black light and searching the walls, you can find the, the code. So just write it down, memorize it, do what you got to do. And you're going to go to these three locations, as I'm showing on screen, scanning the walls. Sometimes it can be a tad difficult. There are um, spawn locations for these specifically, so you can Google those if need be. I uh, don't remember them, so I just scan the walls up and down and I'm able to get the job done there. Once you got your three codes, you're going to enter them into the vault here in that secret room. The nice thing about this, and I think they learned from their mistakes during the Firebase Z dartboard step, is once you interact with the safe, you are actually good to go. The zombie is going to run away from you, and you're able to input the code as many times as you wish. As long as you're interacting with the safe, the zombie will leave you alone. 
It does take me a couple times, even though I do know the codes from looking at them on the wall. The, uh, the little dials are a little sensitive, and sometimes, even though you think you're completely correct, you, for some reason, are not. But once you get the code and you uh, click uh, square or circle, that's going to now enable you to grab the Cerberus Wonder Weapon. Next, you're going to take that and grab the headgear pieces by shooting these three areas of the map with the Cerberus. You're going to gather the headgear pieces for Klaus for a later Easter egg step. And I'm gonna have them on screen now. You're just gonna go over to them, shoot the things that I'm shooting with Cerberus, and grab your headgear pieces, and you are good to go for this Easter egg step. Next thing, you're gonna go over to Klaus and equip the headgear to him. That way, again, once the next time you summon him, he can complete this step off uh, in his passive time. Next up, you're gonna get Wonder Weapon kills to get the Blue Beam upgrade. The Cerberus is special because it kind of acts like an arcade game where the more things you kill with it, it'll drop random upgrades uh, that you can just pick up like drops. One of the upgrades that you need to get is the blue beam upgrade, because that is going to be used to melt the wall that Klaus punched earlier. And there we go, you can see me melting the wall, you just shoot it a bunch, and then eventually the wall will rip away. Do not enter the room though, it will enter the round once you enter the room. Uh, next you're going to have Klaus get more zombies kills, and I have him do it in this room because that is the chair right there, so as soon as that little indicator turns green, you can signal for Klaus to go sit in the chair, and it'll start an upgrade lockdown sequence. You do have to defend Klaus, and the zombies do come in fierce. So having someone like uh, Speed Cola, uh, Ring of Fire, anything like that to allow you to shoot endlessly is going to be very beneficial in this situation. Once Klaus is upgraded, you're going to head into the secret room to end the round. This is going to start a dog round for Mauer, which is those little red exploder guys. After that round is cleared, the little protective bubble is going to dissipate over these machines. You just have to shoot the one in the far corner with the Cerberus to open the door. You can grab the trap, and then you can grab all three of the beakers for this uh, next machine set. You can grab all three at a time, you just have to interact with it three times, and the zombies don't make it easy. But essentially this next step is you're going to have three glowing green boxes around the map and they spawn in different locations each game. You're basically just going to deposit your beaker, throw the trap to summon a couple of tempests, you're going to kill all of them within a close radius of the box, and then you're going to grab it. It's kind of like the outbreak step where you have to um, take the ether canister with you to a location so it has the little bursty uh, L1 R1 type specialist ability. Uh, you're just going to take the zip line and take it back to where you grabbed the canisters from earlier. You can follow my pathing to get there. Basically, it's going to spawn out a bunch of zombies, uh, manglers, the little red goos. You're just going to go back to this room, jump over the barricade, and then deposit it. And then you're just going to grab another trap, rinse and repeat around the map for the rest of the two green boxes. Alright, after you've done that, you're going to have Klaus stop the train. Essentially, now that he's upgraded, if you have him sit on the railroad tracks across from Mule Kick, you flip that switch that I had you flip, he will stop the train. As you see, I have him on the same side as Mule Kick, and he is not going into a pose position. If you have him sit at this position after you've pulled the lever, then he will be able to stop the train. The train's going to come in from straight ahead of you. He's gonna, the train's gonna be stopped by Klaus. You quickly have to run, see the cooling down, we've already pulled the lever. You're gonna have to quickly run onto the train and you're gonna grab one item and one key card. It's gonna be right centered here. On your right is the item and on your left is the key card. Just grab those and then run off the train and you're good to go for that step. You're just gonna place the item in that little beaker section area and it's gonna have you get the uranium from the mango, or the megaton, sorry. Interacting with this computer three, four times is going to enable the step. Basically, a bunch of uh, high-value targets are going to spawn in. Once you kill all of them, they will drop uranium. You're going to grab the uranium pieces, take them to a crafting table to build it, and attach it to two different sides of a zip line. You're going to watch me do it. I'm going to keep it in its entirety. I'm not going to speed ahead at all, so you guys can watch this. This is one of the more difficult steps of the Easter egg. On solo, you can have the time to attach each of the uranium pieces to the zip line, and on a co-op game or above, you do need to do it relatively around the same time as each other. 
But as I mentioned earlier, you're just going to be taking out the high value targets. I recommend killing the Mimics first, as the, the Megaton is what's going to spawn in your Uranium. It can get a bit dicey doing this, as you see I almost get caught up on the tank. It can get a little dicey doing this in the middle of a round. I do recommend saving a few zombies, as you might need to blast a few while you're running the Uranium, because you do actually take damage over time while holding the Uranium. But once you kill the Red Megaton, he's going to split into the segments. Killing each of the segments will drop a piece of Uranium, and you're going to do this pretty much the same thing for each piece, but on different locations. So I'm going to grab the Uranium piece, and I'm going to run it over to this crafting table. You see I'm taking damage over time, and there is a timer. If you fail to do it within the time limit, you will actually fail the step and die and lose the Easter Egg. So you're going to take the Uranium piece. I always run it to the left first, and then to the right. So if you follow my path thing, I'm going to head through this window to your left. I'm going to take the zip line right over here to your left up to the top of the roof and then I'm going to attach it to the zip line. Again, if you're in a co-op or above game, you need to do both of the sides relatively around the same time. So have one person do each and then coordinate when you interact with it. If you're doing solo, you can interact with them one at a time because you can only carry one at a time anyways. So you're going to zip line back down to the ground, jumping out the window and run back to your other piece of uranium doing the exact same thing, running it back to the crafting table to get it all mixed together as the trap and then run to the other side, the right side, taking the zip line up and attaching it to the zip line there. So you see me grab it. I'm gonna run over to the crafting table. Again, it might be beneficial to keep a few zombies because as you see here, I might have to blast a few because um, you do take damage over time and you don't recover health during this state either. So you don't wanna take as much damage as possible. Not that it's gonna take you that long to run there, especially if you have stamina, but it is beneficial to not take as much damage. So if you need to kill zombies, you need to kill zombies. Uh, taking the zip line up here to our right, we're going to zip up to the top, and then we're going to attach it and the little zero part, the O there, and that is going to cause them to collide with each other. You're just going to go down to the ground and then pick up the pieces. From here, you notice the timer is gone, so you don't have to worry about a time limit right now. We're going to go pick up the clump here and take it back down to that secret room from earlier and put it into the canister that we received from the train. Essentially, after that, what I would highly, highly recommend is getting as upgraded for the boss as humanly possible, as you do have to run around in between these steps, and you do have to do this step twice. It's the exact same thing the second time, except they spawn in a different location. But again, here's your warning on screen. There is no turning back once you start the second step of the Uranium step. So you need to get as upgraded for the boss as humanly possible, as in pack-a-punching your Cerberus, getting all perked up, maybe getting a death machine for the boss fight, upgrading your armor, maybe getting some, um, some monkey bombs and any sort of deterrent grenades. Please get upgraded before you start the step. As you see here, I interact with the computer again three times. Same thing as always, kill the high value targets, grab the uranium, build the trap here, put them on the zip lines, collide them, and then take them down to the underneath section. It's the exact same thing as previously, but, net, but now, when you're putting them into the trap here, the little containment device that you grabbed earlier, it is time for the boss fight. Essentially, with Valentina, she does have a uh, armor shield over her that you need to break before you can do damage to her. So it is going to be very beneficial to use stuff like Bring a Fire, the Death Machine, and so forth there. Her deadliest attack that she has is a yellow barrage, a little machine gun. If you pop Ring of Fire while she's shooting that, the barrage will not hurt you, and you get a bunch of free shots on her and a bunch of free points for deflecting uh, projectiles with your Ring of Fire. But it's just going to be navigating this. I'm actually going to leave the full boss fight in its entirety for you guys to watch. It's not a perfect boss fight by any means. I do make a lot of mistakes, but we get the job done. Uh, if you at least have tier 2 pack a punch on your Cerberus and a couple of extra items, just grabbing items in between, you'll be good to go. But yeah, I'm going to leave the entire boss fight in here. If you guys have any questions, please raise them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer any question you guys have about this boss fight in terms of you know, strategy, troubleshooting, etc. I think it's a pretty straightforward fight. It does require some practicing, though, for some people. Um, this is one of the more difficult boss fights in Cold War Zombies. It's not nearly as difficult as, like, Legion from Outbreak, but it is on the more difficult scale. But yeah, you're just going to follow Valentina to all the places that she goes to, do her stage of the boss fight, and then just keep following her around. But yeah, please leave comments, uh, questions, concerns in the comment section below. If you have any regarding this boss fight, I'd be happy to help out anyone who needs it. 
Um, and check out any forums too on Cold War Easter eggs if you guys are struggling with any of these Easter eggs. There's tons of people online willing and down to help you. Oh yeah, one last thing. This blue aura thing, once she starts charging up, you need to break your line of sight, going prone, going somewhere, break your line of sight with her because if she hits it, it's going to be a nearly a one hit kill. It is a AoE wiping attack. Uh, but yeah, with that out of the way, I'm going to step aside from the microphone and let you guys watch the boss fight in its entirety. I'll see you guys here in a couple moments. And with her last bit of health ticking down, we are going to go into the final step of the Easter Egg. You're going to see a cutscene, and it is the Klaus finale step. He has to run this little Dark Aether canister into the portal, and you need to protect him. Uh, it is a timed segment. There is not a timer, but it is timed. And you do need to protect him as he walks into the light. I haven't had this issue since the first time that I played this Easter Egg, but there was an issue back in the day where Klaus would stop moving forward entirely. He would just stop. And I actually failed the Easter Egg because it said I failed to protect Klaus, and that's just because he just stopped moving forward. I was shooting all the zombies, but he just wasn't moving for some unearthly reason. I have no idea. But yeah, just protect Klaus. He'll walk forward. Once he says, like, Afi Zane or something along those lines, you will be good to go. 
Um, but after that point, he will, yep, there we go. There's the, uh, the vocal part there. He's just gonna continue walking into the light. And then after that point, you are good to go. You have beaten the Mauer de Toten Easter egg. You can throw candy at a jack-o'-lantern. You can do whatever you wanna do to celebrate. The cutscene is gonna roll. And again, you have beaten the Mauer de Toten Easter egg. I just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who has been supporting these videos. Again, we had no idea once we made the D-Machina updated tutorial that we would get so many of you so interested in Cold War Zombies still. Uh, it makes sense with Vanguard being, you know, less than impressive in terms of zombies. But again, I just didn't assume because this game was kind of polarizing when it launched. Um, so it's nice to see a bunch of faces that are still playing this game. If you have any questions about this egg in its entirety, please leave them in the comment section below, as well as any comments about any content you want to see in the future. We do have the Forsaken uh, footage ready to go. We just need to edit it. So it is in the process and that will be going live as soon as we finish it. But here is our one for Mauer. If you haven't seen them, we do have one for the D-Machina and the Firebase C Easter eggs, and we might do them for the Outbreak ones later down the line, as they are necessary to get purple rarity on your weapons. But yeah, if you liked what you see and you're new around here, please consider giving that subscribe button, the Omega Fist Fire Thorn Punch, as it's free. It really helps us out, and again, comment down below any content recommendations. We love taking ideas from you guys, because we want to create content that you want to see. You know, we love making content that we want to make, but oftentimes those views aligns with what you want to see. So let us know in the comments below. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for stopping by today, and we will catch you guys on either the next tutorial, the next stream, or the next video. Bye-bye, guys.